Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to another edition of the Bengal Tiger Podcast. I'm Billy Embody. With me is Shay Dixon. Hope you guys are enjoying your week. Uh, it's been a big one on the BengalTiger.com. We wrapped up our uh, dollar for three month promotion uh, at Wednesday uh, at midnight. So thank you guys listening to this on Thursday now that uh, you guys have subscribed. If you did, we appreciate you guys. But also, LSU's been red hot on the commitment train, but we've broken the pair of commitments LSU's reeled in uh, down already. So let's jump ahead of class, Shay. This is very natural here because we've got another huge visitor hitting LSU's campus this weekend. Five-star quarterback Bryce Underwood is back in town this weekend for another multi-day visit to Baton Rouge to spend time with Joe Sloan. Brian Kelly is the number one quarterback in the country, number one prospect. This is another massive opportunity for LSU here. Yeah, I think, Billy, we're seeing a stretch where LSU has gone almost, you know, more than six months with two 2025 quarterbacks at the top of the wish list. And they are the only two guys who held offers in that stretch. And it's been Bryce Underwood and George McIntyre. If you're watching on YouTube, you'll see right now on his player page, on three has him not only as the number one, quarterback in the country, the number one overall player in the country, 6'3", 210, coming out of Belleville, Michigan. This is a guy who we've mentioned before on the podcast. We've talked to college coaches at a number of different schools who think he's the best prospect that's come out at quarterback in the past few cycles. That's how highly regarded of a recruit he is. You'll see Michigan. They're leading the way on the on three RPM. We do believe Michigan, the in-state school, is in his top two, top three, however you want to slice it. But I would put LSU above a Michigan State, above an Ohio State even at this stage. LSU has gotten him to campus a number of times. They get him to campus again this weekend. All these visits are unofficial visits, Billy. So it's beginning to stack up for him. I know he's around the in-state schools a good bit, but Joe Sloan has done such a good job of getting in with Underwood, with his dad, with the coaches there, and making LSU a legit contender We've seen them host Trevor Lawrence before back in the day. We saw him host in Tua. We saw him host Justin Fields. Like they've swung for number one quarterbacks in the country many times. Most recently, last cycle, very early on, they were in on Dante Moore and they got Arch Manning to campus. But this seems to me like one where LSU has a very legitimate shot being in the top two, in my opinion, with Michigan to come away with the number one overall player in the country. Yeah, I, I think this is, for me, going to be one of those interesting ones where we've got to put aside history because, you know, LSU has not gotten a guy like this. Uh, they just haven't historically. And, you know, those were prior coaching staffs that hosted, you know, guys like Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields and Tua, and this is a new one. And, uh, you know, LSU swung for big-time quarterbacks in the past couple of years, Dante Moore, Jaden Rashada, um, Julian Sayan, you know, guys like that. And they ended up not getting him. But this one does at least feel just a little different, um, I would say. You know, they backed up um, the visits this spring with one this summer in June. And uh, from what it seems like, this is his only visit in June that we know of um, right now. From what I've seen, I, haven't, I, I don't think um, he's taken other visits. And that stands out. But the big question I'll have on this one is, does this go – into the fall? Does it go into next spring? And if it does, what does that mean for the dominoes? Because we talk about them all the time when it comes to quarterbacks. And if he takes it into next spring, what does the list look like? Because he hasn't, you mentioned he's been around the in-state programs like Michigan and Michigan State. Ohio State just made a new quarterback offer. Uh, it seems like Tavian St. Clair is, you know, a good bet to end up a Buckeye. What does that mean for Bryce Underwood? You know, if that's the case and they get Tavian St. Clair, well, now does that open the door for other programs to start getting them onto campus? It's just one of those recruitments that if you're LSU, honestly, you hope he comes out of this visit in June and decides to shut down his recruitment. And that's the reality of it, because this is one of those things where if it drags on into next spring, it's a lot of time for other schools to make up ground, too, on LSU. I think the job Joe Sloan has done recruiting Bryce Underwood is probably the best out of anyone in the country right now. And uh, I've talked with his dad before, and he's backed that up. 
um, you know, the, the time that they've spent around him. Um, but Michigan's still swinging away, and it'll be interesting to see if this one stretches out. This would be one of those historic lands for LSU, you know, a, a type of player that we just haven't seen them get before. And um, it, it, you, you feel good about the job LSU's done so far, but with the number one overall player in the country, how many, are there going to be any twists with this one? Right. I mean, if you look at the past 20 years, even they got a Jamarcus Russell, they got a Russell Shepard out of Texas. They kept Paralu at home, like guys who are five star, very highly ranked quarterbacks, but out of high school, we're not counting any transfers here. Obviously they went on a run of those, but for them to be in on a Michigan guy and going heads up against Michigan, I think is a big, big deal. And not just a number one quarterback or top few quarterback, but the number one overall player, I'll also give Sloan kudos for this because a lot of people have said, well, how long can you go with just offers out to two guys? And those two guys are the number one and two quarterbacks in the country. Well, you look at on threes rankings, Billy, the number three quarterback in the country, Carter Smith, has been all over Joe Sloan's radar. He'll be visiting at some point here very soon. Deuce Knight was on campus, the number four quarterback in the country, a week ago to throw at camp. Ty Hawkins has visited. Uh, Blake Hebert is a guy who's about to end up going to Clemson which would then take Clemson off George McIntyre's list, which was sort of an intriguing development this week. And then Keelan Russell out of Duncanville, who a lot of people love as a top prospect, already ranked as a top 100 prospect on on three. He was in last week to throw for LSU. And you can just go down that list. KJ Lacey's already been in to throw. Uh, Hussein Longstreet's already been in to throw. Uh, they made an offer, as you said, to Tavian St. Clair, a top 25 quarterback who's already been in to throw. So, while well, these two guys, Underwood and McIntyre, have gotten the headlines because they've gone so long as the only two offers, Joe Sloan hasn't rested there. He has put in a lot of work with all these other names I mentioned. I feel good about LSU coming away with a big name in this class. Yeah, I mean, you're you're going to have to. I mean, it, it is, you know, you have a guy who's going to be super young and Colin Hurley coming into college in 2024. You've got Ricky Collins, but you also have a lot of time overall until the 2025 quarterback gets to campus, right? And so a lot can happen. Jaden Daniels is going into his last year. Then it's going to be Garrett Nussmeyer. And then whoever they get in 2025 could theoretically be thrust into, you know, starting quarterback competition. I'm trying to count ahead here in terms of years Nussmeyer has left, but either as a true freshman or a redshirt freshman, whichever one, um, you know, Garrett Nussmeyer, if he, what does he have? Uh, Two years left. He would have he would have multiple years left once he started. But yes, it would be yeah. if everyone stayed put, it would be Ricky Collins, Colin Hurley, and then whomever they get in the 25 class as the quarterbacks next up after Nussmeyer. Yeah. And if that's the case, for Joe Sloan, this is the type of quarterback competition that a 2025 quarterback should be just chomping at the bit, quite honestly. You know, you you've got Ricky Collins, who's kind of a developmental guy who has shown a ton of upside if he could put it all together, which, you know, we'll see over the next couple of years. You have Colin Hurley, who's very, very polished. He'll have been on campus for a whole year after that. Uh, but the the guys that they're shooting for in 2025, specifically Underwood and McIntyre, should feel pretty good if they were to pick LSU that they could walk in and start day one. I think uh, at least walk in and compete. Uh, you know, day one. I don't know if start right away, but yes, these are these are guys when you're recruiting that high of a level who do walk onto a college campus with the expectation of if you don't have a returning starter, I'm firmly in that mix. It, it's a it's an interesting uh, you know time for Joe Sloan. Um, they th there are 2025 is a much better quarterback class top to bottom than 2024, which is the good thing here. And there are more guys that are going to emerge, um, and so. We'll kind of see how how Joe Sloan plays it, but this is a this is kind of a like a pseudo official visit before Bryce Underwood could even take official visits. So this is a major opportunity for LSU to just keep chipping away at it and and trying to you know cement themselves as you know one of if not the top school. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll catch you guys up on kind of what Underwood and his dad say about the weekend once it wraps up. They actually do have some official visitors, guys who will be seniors. Billy, where where do you want to kick it off? You want to start off at Edge rusher, D-line? Yeah, I do. I want to start start off at edge rusher because it's kind of timely here uh, because we just caught up with one of the top uh, edge rushers in the country that LSU's after, and that's Danny Okoye. So you can check out that interview on the, that, uh, interview on the site. 
um, thebengaltiger.com. Uh, he's one of the top edge rushers in the country. LSU is going to get him on campus next week. But this weekend, they get Tucker Georgia four-star edge rusher C.J. Jackson on campus. He's a top 100 prospect on on three, number seven edge rusher in the country. And, Shay, this could be one of those situations like a B.J. Ojolari, same state, same kind of situation, where if Georgia doesn't turn up the heat here, uh, uh, you know, before he makes a decision, LSU could come away here a massive winner. Ask me if I had my C.J. Jackson uh... – in my mock 1.0 back in March, LSU recruiting prediction piece, and my mock 2.0 that dropped this past week, yes and yes. I put him into that category. Remember, Arden Key, there's been a lot of guys in Georgia over the year, Whit Weeks a year ago, that is talented enough, very much talented enough to play at Georgia. But when you're in the state of Georgia and you're reeling in recruiting classes that are often right now ranked number one and two, you've gone back-to-back as national champs, You've got a lot of people chomping at the bit that affords a lot of schools to get into Georgia and strike on players. And you'll see on there, there's disparity. If you're watching on YouTube between what the industry ranks CJ Jackson, which is about a top 15 player as an edge rusher, top 200 player nationally, and how we feel about it, about him at on three, we have him as a top 100 player, top 75 to be specific. And the number seven edge rusher in the country I think this is a kid pushing 6'4", 225. That is exactly what John Jancic and this staff want, Madhouse wants, out of that edge rusher. And I do see a door open there for LSU to move past Georgia for exactly the reason you're saying. If Georgia's really not going to buckle and go all in, do everything they can to get him, C.J. Jackson can wind up at a school like LSU. And he has told on three, I think he did an interview with Jeremy Johnson recently where he said, LSU recruits me harder than anybody right now. So if that continues, we'll see how his official visit goes this weekend. But I certainly could see this being one of the steals of the class for him. You know, the cool thing about C.J. Jackson, though, is also that he's one of those players that is a really great kid, too. Um, He wants to major uh, in aviation or engineering, whatever route he can take to be uh, an aviator after college or after his playing days in the NFL or all over. um, That's the kind of prospect he is. He's just a very high IQ player. John Jancic's done a really nice job recruiting him, putting together the whole run of what he would have to do at LSU uh, to secure that and to make that a a reality. So I like the personal approach that John Jancic's taken. I think he had a relationship with him way back um, when he was at Georgia as an analyst uh, before he came over to LSU as well, kind of doing a little recruiting behind the scenes there. Then he was at LSU as an analyst before being promoted. He's got a nice little run of relationships going in Georgia overall. Um, I like the way the edge rusher board is is starting to stack up. We've seen C.J. Jackson come in this weekend. We're going to see Danny Okoye come in for an unofficial visit next week. They're obviously after Colin Simmons. They have Collage Cobbins committed. Uh, this is a good situation for LSU to be in, and I, I just feel like you're seeing the press get turned up here on C.J. Jackson, and it could pay off. Yeah, and I will note before we move on here that C.J. Jackson does have an official visit scheduled to Georgia for next weekend, so – We'll get some clarity on where things stand with the Bulldogs. Obviously, LSU considers him a top priority. And Billy, I think by the end of the month, beginning of July, we'll have a good feel for what LSU's chances really are there. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's a lot of a lot of the kids we're we're talking about right now. Uh, earlier this week, we ran down a bunch of prospects that you know had decisions uh, coming up or uh, have now made them uh, in Kylan uh, Billiot's uh, case and. Um, uh, as well as, um, oh gosh, who uh, LSU just got on board as well. Is uh, it going to take you that long, Billy? Dum, 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 oh, dum, dum. Joel, Joel Rogers. Geez. There you go. Um, long day around here. Um, but uh, we've kind of been running those down and more decision dates are starting to get set. Um, that just is something that I'm starting to see around the country as prospects start to know that they're in a good place with a certain school or a certain set of schools and they start to set those decision dates. So 
Um, LSU is uh, sitting in a good spot to get a steal out of Georgia in a sense, uh, a top 100 steal that would be. Um, one prospect that is a very intriguing recruitment to follow right now for many reasons, uh, but Ori Williams out of San Marcos, Texas, uh, is a prospect that uh, we saw uh, this spring in his spring game uh, down there at San Marcos and um, has Texas as the on through recruiting prediction machine leader. But I think we're both in agreement that it doesn't seem like Texas is going to be the pick here. LSU and AM are kind of battling it out. Uh, Georgia was once in the picture. It doesn't seem like they're going to bring him in and bring him in for a visit. I saw him at his spring game. He's a very developmental prospect. He is long. He looks the part, but he also is still almost like growing into his body. Brad Davis has been all over him, though. I have him as one of the tackles in this class for LSU, and now he comes to campus, a Louisiana native, and I think the Heat, if they turn it up, they they could get him on board. This is going to be an, an Ori Williams who I really like. When you say developmental in 6'7 and 285, and, and you're looking at some clips of him now if you're watching on YouTube, I think he's a guy that if Brad Davis and Brian Kelly see something in him that they like and they feel like, hey, this is someone that could really take off under uh, our tutelage, then I'm behind it because I think both of them make really good O-line evals. I'll say about Ori Williams, the same thing that I'm thinking right now about a guy who's going to visit a week from now, Billy Blake Ivy. Both these guys seem to me, from everything we've talked to people about, that it could down, come down to LSU and AM. If you can split those two with AM, that would be great. If that's kind of really how it's going to unfold, that maybe you get one, AM gets the other, we'll see. But you'd like to go into Texas and nab one of these guys. They get Ori Williams this weekend, they get Blake Ivy next weekend. And Billy, what that's going to do is then if if and when those guys don't go to LSU, that's going to open up the door for a guy like Zyron Brown out of South Mississippi, who has been really heavily recruited by LSU and Brad Davis. But there's just other guys out there like an Ori Williams, like a Blake Ivy that need to get to that decision point first before you make a move on them. So these visit weekends are key for so many reasons, not just for Ori Williams, but for everyone else that it involves from there. Yeah, the, the thing about um, Ori Williams and, and Blake Ivey is, you know, one thing I talked I talked with Ori Williams after this spring game, you're seeing some of the clips here, um, and he named LSU as number one. He named them as leader, um, and that was when he really had this full slate of official visits that included Georgia, that included Texas, um, and then he ended up taking a, an official visit to Florida, and he's, he checked out A&M last week, and now he heads to LSU. This is one of those – official visitors that I feel like you entered the month as the leader, you've got to close them down. And I think Brad Davis will. I really do. I think they're going to be able to hold off AM in this recruitment and win. Now, Blake Ivy, that's a tougher uh, situation there. Yes, he has ties to Louisiana as well, but he's also in a very friendly area to Texas A&M. This San Marcos program is right down the road from Texas. Uh, if you're not battling the Longhorns as much here. I think this is a better situation for LSU to be able to pull him out. We'll kind of see, but from what I've gathered, it seems like LSU's the team to beat for Oreo Williams. He said it himself. Sources kind of back that up. I, at this point, expect LSU to get Ori Williams coming out of this month. Um, and with the tackles with the tackles that they've signed the last two cycles, 6'7", 285, he needs to continue to improve his bend, his technique, all those things, that's fine. He can develop behind all those guys for multiple years. And even as a redshirt sophomore eventually or redshirt junior ends up taking over one of the tackle positions, that'd be a good situation. 100%. I think that, uh, again, I'm going to go back to what I said before. I'd like to see them come away with Ori Williams or Blake Ivy. That would be impressive to me. Go into Texas and get a guy – now, if you don't get either of them and you get a Weston Davis, hey, my hands are up. You've done even better. But with these two visit weekends coming up, I'm, I'm interested to watch this O-line group kind of begin to, to work itself out. And Billy, in the middle of all that, next Monday, we'll find out where Marcus Mescal goes to college, who's one of their top offensive linemen. So uh, busy few weeks here for O-line recruiting and Brad Davis at LSU.
if you're asking me to kind of rank who I think LSU has the best shot for out of those three offensive linemen from Texas. Really rank who LSU has the best shot with for these offensive linemen. Yeah. <laughs> it would be Ori Williams, Weston Davis, Blake Ivey. Sources, sauces say uh, Blake Ivey's coaching staff has a lot of AM gear in that uh, office down there. at. Uh, you're, you're not including Marcus Mascall in that? No, the okay. three in Texas. Texas three kids. In Texas. All three right. In Texas. I, I've, I've still got – uh, LSU is a team to beat for Marcus Moscow as well. So that'd be a good piece there. Um, I think another debate here we um, on our next topic is the D. Well, let's be specific. Corner debate. Because I feel like, and they've got Jalen Crawford coming in this weekend on an official visit. Andre Evans out of Nashville, who we've talked about a ton here recently. If you missed it, he's blown up. Got Georgia, LSU, BAM offers all in the span of about a week. Came to LSU's camp, tore it up. Uh, we're high on him at on three. Again, you see him, the rest of the recruiting industry has him ranked as a top 250 player, number 25 corner. We've got him as a top 100 player, knocking on the door of a top 10 corner, the number one player in Tennessee right now. And he was blown away by LSU. LSU was blown away by him. He's now going to announce on Friday. So depending on when you're listening to this, he may or may not already have announced. We have our on three RPM picks in for LSU. And Billy, I look at, and then I've been told too, sauces, that if uh, this does go LSU's way on Friday, that Andre Evans would be added to the weekend visitor list of officials. It brings me back to Jalen Crawford, though. A couple of months ago, Billy, we would have said Jalen Crawford is one of the top cornerback names on their board, and he still certainly is, is in that mix. Now we would shift and say Andre Evans is up there, Kai Bates, who got an offer in that stretch, is up there and it makes me begin to wonder where's Robert Steeples want to go from here? Because if you get Andre Evans and you've already got Jawan Johnson and you've got Wallace Foster as a nickel and you've got a Zion Ferguson on board, we'll see again, we've talked about uh, an out-of-state guy like Ferguson before, but does he ultimately stick? I think you move forward saying, hey, we're going to continue to take guys. Where do you stack up with Crawford? And maybe, Billy, more importantly, where does Crawford stack up or where does LSU stack up for Crawford? Because I once thought they had an edge on Auburn. Now that I see them in it with Andre Evans and maybe on the verge of getting him, in it with Kai Bates, still in it obviously with Wardell Mack, the state's top corner in Louisiana, I begin to wonder, does a Jalen Crawford lean more towards Auburn, who he just visited here recently, and he's got a decision date set. Yeah, I think he's turning into one of those prospects. Now, to jog some memories on, uh, for those of you who have been on the Bengal Tiger, just following this recruitment for a long, long time, I think last summer, Jalen Crawford visited LSU. And I, I've, if he wasn't a silent commit, he was pretty darn close at that point. And a lot of people expected him to jump on board. He then pressed pause and took it into the fall, then into the spring, then into the summer. And and look, I saw him at the Under Armour Atlanta camp, and he wasn't necessarily a guy that just flashed complete dominance uh, like I thought he might. Um, but he is still a very good prospect overall, a guy that could end up being a, a multi-year starter at the college level. But where he was last summer, his stock was so, so high. And I feel like now Andre Evans, Kai Bates, like you said, both above him on LSU's board. We know Kobe Black, the five-star corner out of Texas, who is going to take an LSU official visit this fall um, and will be back uh, this summer in July yeah, as well. That's right. Um, is, I mean, he's higher on, on the board than Jalen Crawford. So if you get Andre Evans, then if you get Kai Bates, which I think Robert Steeples has them right in the mix for, I don't think Jalen Crawford's take anymore. Just quite honestly, I just and don't. We're not know. speaking for the staff here. This is our. This is an opinion. No, this coming is from my. Me. This is my opinion. But uh, like, you have two guys, and Andre Evans is already top one hundred, and Kai Bates could very well end up top one hundred. You have him committed. You have two nickels. You're still after Wardell Mack. You're still swinging at Kobe Black. I mean, how could you even recruit Kobe Black and have a shot if you had Jalen Crawford also in there? So I think this is one of those situations where the numbers could work out, um, you know, for LSU and then both sides where, you know, Jalen Crawford could end up at Auburn. He could end up at Clemson, uh, Florida. Yeah, uh, Florida. Yep. So 
he's one that could go a multitude of ways. Um, and but, it's a situation, Billy, too. What if Kai Bates ends up elsewhere? Did yeah. they sense that and say, okay, let's get Jalen Crawford in the boat? So this weekend will be, uh, like we said, he's coming on an official visit with his family. So they're going to get some things answered this weekend. I think it will be, it's kind of why I, I, I led into this one, much like the O-line. It's an interesting few weeks here because guys are going to be committing. Guys are going to be on OVs. Guys are going to be on unofficials. And whether it's Brad Davis in the O-line or Robert Siebel's at corner, decisions are starting to have to be made here. Yeah, and and Jalen Crawford will be making his decision at the end of July. He told us, at least uh, at Auburn Live, our Auburn site, that Auburn, LSU, Florida, and North Carolina are the fi finalists for him. So an interesting group there uh, for Jalen Crawford. And and look, Auburn has you know, been recruiting him for a while, so it'll be interesting to see how that one pans out for sure. We do have one more official visitor, Shay, and it's a little bit of a, uh, let's just say, kind of a wild card one, but one that, if you're on the Bengal Tiger, you've known about for quite some time now, and that is Connor Gilbreth, uh, the junior college tight end um, out of Butte College uh, out there on the West Coast, um, and he's coming in as an official visitor this weekend. We've talked about him for a while, and look, I mean, if we – had to put in a pick right now. LSU's got to be the team to beat for this massive tight end. Yeah, I'm almost knocking on the door of just putting in a pick any day, but I'll wait for him to get to campus and see how things are. But even ahead of that, I've talked to him a number of times since they offered him, and he is sky high on LSU as an opportunity. He's already taken Missouri and Arizona official visits. He'll follow it up with Mississippi State and NC State. And then he wants to decide because – he can go, he's got the grades and everything's in order to enroll in a four-year college this fall. So LSU's offensive coordinator, Mike Denbrock, who's also the tight ends coach, says, hey, here's the plan. And Gilbreth is listed at 6'6", 270. Let's say he's in that range. You come in this year and you help us out, LSU being us, this is Mike Denbrock speaking, you help us out as a blocking tight end. And if you've ever read any of my articles with Gilbreth, he talks about tight end being a position where he doesn't want to run a route. He doesn't want to catch a ball. He just wants to like run into people and block them. And that's what LSU needs right now. They have a Mason Taylor can catch the football. They brought in a really talented pass catcher in Kamori and Pimpton. They brought in an inline black blocker in Mark, Mark, uh, Mac Markway, excuse me, but he's just a true freshman who hasn't played high school football in two years because he's been recovering from injury. You've also got Jackson McGohan as a true freshman they were looking for someone in the portal who brought age, a little bit of experience, maybe a little bit more maturation in his body. Gilbreth is exactly that. And they've said, hey, come in that first year, maybe two, be a blocking tight end. But let us develop you into an offensive tackle, which is where his body could ultimately go. It's almost like a two for one. LSU loves this idea right now. Gilbreth has been all over it as well. I know he's got five total visits. We'll see if he adds any more. Um, but he has told me that LSU is in a great spot going into this visit. And again, this is a guy that they would be adding to this year's team. All these other kids we're talking about are rising seniors. Gilbreth would be on roster when they played Florida State to open the season. So very important visit weekend there. Yeah, no question about it. So I, I think those are the types of guys that you want to root for, <laughs> I would say, with just that mindset, you know, very team first, very uh, physical, nasty player that uh, LSU's got in this weekend. And uh, you could always use more of those in the SEC for sure. So we'll see how that one goes. It'll be a busy weekend on the Bengal Tiger. Again, if, if you missed out on our uh, subscription deal, sorry, um, that was about as good as it gets as far as uh, deals go. But welcome to the site. You can still try us for uh, seven days for free to see if you like us and get your Bengal Tiger Founders Club hat as well. So check that out. Uh, but Shay, let's end on this. Uh, late last night uh, out there on the West Coast, uh, the Elite 11 began. Colin Hurley, LSU quarterback commit, is out there in Los Angeles uh, competing uh, um, alongside some of the top prospects in the country. Uh, he is also in that boat, of course, as LSU's quarterback commit. I think with this camp, and it runs uh, or runs Wednesday, Wednesday night late uh, to um, uh, Friday, and this is an opportunity for Colin Hurley to once again show um, what he's got, um, and that's one of the best arms in the country, and uh, he's really, really good in this setting, and 
I, I think he's got a chance to make some noise in, in this camp. Yeah, the actual Elite 11 winner, they judge based off 50% based off how you do across the three days at Elite 11, and then 50% on how your junior season went. So it can kind of be skewed in terms of like who the winner is compared to, or I should say relative to like what everybody did at the camp. But we've got both our national rankings guys out there and Cody Belair and Charles Power. We've got a bunch of uh, national uh, recruiting analysts out there, Sam Spiegelman and others. We're going to have a ton of coverage from it. I'm with you. I fully expect Hurley across the three days to look good. He's always looks good in that throwing session where it's sort of just get the ball. Let's start spinning about 20 of them, hitting different targets and see how you look. He shines there. And we don't have to get into any talk right now about his senior season or anything like that or what he has to do to, to move up the rankings. I think he'll have a very good showing out there. And I think that the on three rankings – of how the quarterbacks do at Elite 11 will reflect that in the sense of, in my opinion, my guess is that he'll be one of the more accurate guys that's out there. And he's got a big arm. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, every every time I've seen him this offseason, I mean, that that's kind of been what he's what he's been, quite honestly. He he's been that accurate. He's shown that arm strength that can um, you know, that that's what Joe Sloan and this staff is really um liking about him and, and that's why they got him on board and that's why they um you know said hey look if you can reclassify let's do this let's get this done now um and so he is a guy that works incredibly hard uh just puts everything into it he was in baton rouge last week spending time doing recruiting um not only is he out uh, on the west coast for the uh, elite 11 finals he'll do uh, i believe uh, all 22 or OT7 finals uh, are right after that as well. So, I mean, it's a busy, busy week um, out there for him. And uh, he's been really, really good this whole offseason. I mean, the, we can talk about the, the senior season later on, but um, the big thing for LSU is he's been one of the biggest recruiters in this, stat, in this uh, class. And he'll be back next weekend to get some more recruiting done for LSU with a massive official visit weekend. Yeah, if you didn't catch our pieces, he talked about Elite 11. He talked about recruiting Traylon Miller, one of the top guys in the class at receiver. Uh, Cam Coleman's one of his seven-on-seven teammates. Uh, You see Traylon Miller there at Silsby uh, at LSU seven-on-seven camp. Um, But Colin Hurley has been all over those guys, a key component to kind of what they're trying to build uh, in this 2024 cycle of uh, kind of a family-first approach to all these guys being friends, putting them around each other and, and trying to really strengthen each of their commitments and getting them on board. So nice, uh, a nice start uh, to the week for LSU with Joel Rogers and then getting Kyler Billiot and then uh, obviously with an Andre Evans decision coming Friday. So good times. They're rolling right now in Baton Rouge. Yeah. And uh, also Friday Night Lights camp and uh, final elite camp of the summer, Friday, Saturday morning. It's been a busy three weeks, but we're making it, Billy. Yes. Then we'll have a little break. We'll have some camp stuff to go through, get those thoughts finalized, get official visit recaps, and then the final official visit weekend of June before a well-deserved break for at least, you know, some of us. Uh, some of us didn't get a two-week uh, Euro trip. I came straight off a Rome flight and started covering camp, Billy. I'll be fine. I'm also taking Billy and his his uh, better half to Geno's on Friday night. I don't know if I'm taking them. Uh, Billy, you can probably get your half of the bill, but I'll be, I made the reservation. So, we are at least treating ourselves in between the two camps uh, with we you are, driving in from out of town. We are taking big steps. Uh, Shay made a reservation. Uh, that's, that's and a- I changed the reservation. I, I wouldn't even, I originally did it for Saturday and then LSU played Saturday night in baseball. So I just shifted to Friday. That's multi levels of responsibility there growing yeah. up. Yes. Big time weekend for LSU. Uh, it's a big time weekend for us as well. So That's excited right. to do it all with you guys on the BengalTiger.com as well as you guys who subscribe to our YouTube channel. We appreciate you guys for clicking that subscribe button. We are uh, closing in on 4,000 uh, subscribers on the YouTube channel. Also uh, jumping back up to an all-time high on the site. So thanks everyone for making this summer uh, just awesome. Uh, and it'll it looks like it's going to keep trending that way for LSU too. So we'll be here to cover it with you guys. Every step of the way for Shay Dixon, I'm Billy Embody. Thanks for listening to this edition of the Bengal Tiger Podcast.